Hello and welcome to Hort Science Live. My name is Samuel Rivers. I am the Technical Controls Manager for ICL. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be there with you today, so I hope you're all enjoying the day so far. Um, and today, my talk is going to be on one of our new uh, biological insecticides coming to the market called Laugard M52GR. So I'll do my best in virtual form and any questions at the end, please feel free to ask your, your guide. Um, and we have a Q&A panel at the end as well. So just going into this presentation, I just want to start with the way the industry is is changing in its direction and its regard to plant protection products. And one thing that's really driving this is something called the Sustainable Use Directive. And this is really changing the way we operate on the nursery by implementing new regulations which are designed to promote more environmentally responsible and sustainable use of plant protection products. And this is law now throughout the UK and Europe, and all growers are expected to follow the various protocols within the legislation. Um, growers who embrace these challenges at the earliest opportunity are going to be better equipped um, to adapt to new crop protection techniques going forward. Now, I won't go into too much detail, but under the Sustainable Use direct uh, Directive, we have this um, up, like hierarchy of control. And this expects us to follow any kind of issue on the nursery, such as a pest or disease, um, with an order of priority. So we start with cultural control options first, and this can include things such as nursery hygiene, you know, weeding, putting plants in quarantine areas. And then the next step in this hierarchy is the biological approach. And this is where Laugard M52GR falls under. And this is the use of you know, beneficial insects, biostimulants, biorational, biopesticides, biofungicides. And then after this step, we then go on to physically acting products, something like maltodextrin or SB plant invigorator, which is designed to affect the insect uh, externally and not enter its physiology. Um, and then lastly, we have the chemical as this very much last resort. Uh, chemicals are getting uh, a lot more restrictions on their use now. The environmental and public health concerns regarding their use um, is becoming more and more prominent. So this hierarchy of control helps us control problems in the nursery. Um, and this is really the direction that um, a lot of companies, including ICL, are, are going. And this is why Laugard um, M52GR is going to be part of our portfolio going forward, forward as it offers this wonderful um, biological approach to controlling black vine weevil on the nursery. So just going into to Laugard M52, it's a biological pesticide which can be used within growing media uh, for the control of black vine weevil. So we incorporate this. You'll see on the on the far right picture here, it's uh, loaded onto a rice grain carrier. And the active substance is something called Metarhizium bruneum, which is formerly known as Metarhizium anciolope. Um, it's a granule, like I said, it's loaded, the spores are loaded onto this rice carrier and then it's pre-mixed into the growing media. The application rate is 500 grams per cubic meter. Um, stores for 12 months at 4 to 23 degrees C. And we're selling this in the pack size of 10 uh, to 1 kilos, but we anticipate a lot of growers who use this product um, as they use our products will have this pre-mixed into the growing media orders and delivered to the nursery. So the, the features and benefits of this product, it's a highly efficacious standalone bioinsecticide for black bioweevil control, um, it has consistent efficacy and it's comparable um, in terms of control to many chemicals um, and reduces chemical inputs when combined into a program. Now, uh, Chemicals for vine weevil control are few and far between these days, but we like to build, we're viewing to build this product now into using other products such as nematodes and other chemicals too, um, which give you a real, real like um, good control throughout the season. And this is where we're starting to build these IPM plans. ICL have a product called Pitcher GR, which is a garlic based. Um, Biorational, which controls egg stage, uh, egg stages of vine weevil, and then we combine that with our nematode range, the Seeker nematode range, and then combining that with Laugar gives you really high um, levels of control against black vine weevil. 
Um, so what is Metarhizium? So it's a soil-borne insect pathogenic fungus, Metarhizium bruneum strain MA43. There are other strains of Metarhizium, um, but this strain has been selected for its uh, control on vine weevil. Um, it's well suited as a biopesticide because it, it doesn't have to be ingested. Um, it's a contact acting um, product. Um, but like I said, the metarhizium can exist in nature as a saprophyte, arthropod parasite, um, and a beneficial root epiphyte as well, and an endophyte. Uh, one of the benefits is that it's highly compatible with existing plant protection products, in, especially in the vine weevil control range. So just a little bit about how it works. So once the spores are, are incorporated into growing media, it's the mixing process that really breaks these spores and evenly distributes them throughout the growing media. And that's really crucial to know if you're buying this and mixing it yourself. The, the mixing process is really integral to get those spores um, evenly mixed in the growing media. We've seen people of old use these products and applied it as a top dress and that is just not suitable. So we recommend to thoroughly mix it if you are mixing it yourself. Um, so what happens, these spores are mixed in the growing media and then they come into contact with, with the insect. In this regard, it's vine weevil. We're looking more at the larval stage of vine weevil here. So what happens, the spores stick to the larvae, larval stage. And then under the right conditions, again, another crucial thing to know is that um, these spores will not germinate uh, at lower or really high temperatures. Um, they will be viable year round, but they won't germinate until those those temperatures are right. Optimal temperatures for this are around 15 to 30 degrees C. So once those temperatures uh, reach that 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 temperature, um, it starts to germinate. And then this starts to penetrate through the insect uh, cuticle um, and then this appressorium formation occurs um, and then it penetrates into the insect, colonizes the hemolymph like the insect, consumes it as a food source, energy source, um, and then the, the process starts over. The spores then are re-released into the growing media and there is some sort of distribution effect from this as well. So again, it's temperature pending. Um, the spores do remain viable, as I mentioned, for 12 months. Um, but they won't germinate until those conditions are, are appropriate. But once it's in its optimal temperature range, it can take three to seven days to kill a vine weevil larval stage. And that really depends on, on the stage of the larvae. There are numerous instars to vine weevil, so the, the younger, immature stages will, will die a lot quicker, and you're very unlikely to see any kind of effect um, if you look in the growing media, you probably won't see them because it's so quick. It's the older, mature larvae, you'll see this real kind of degradation, um, this, um, you know, attack on them. And I have some pictures I'll show you later in the presentation which demonstrates this. So the application, um, it's mixed into growing media. Uh, it can be pre-mixed into growing media and delivered, which is what we're expecting to do with the majority of this product. As I mentioned, we are selling it in a 10 kilo or one kilo pack. Um, and just really emphasizing that this has to be mixed thoroughly to get those spores mixed into the growing media evenly and broken off that carrier. So some a little bit of guidelines if you are mixing yourself the cult, culture substrate shouldn't be really dry or excessively wet um particularly bark based because uh, you know really high levels of bark tend to be susceptible to overheating most bio um, products uh, 42 degrees is this this number where the, the maximal temperature um it starts to decline and reduce its efficacy um, with all plant protection products, we, we recommend we use within 21 days. It says use within 31, 30 days there, but we recommend 21 days here. Um, the control of larvae, most of the data from this um, product is, has been shown to be greatest in peat-based media because that's the data we have, but we do have trial data now supporting peat-free and peat-reduced growing medias, showing really good levels of control comparable to peat-based growing medias. Um, again, the optimum temp for this product to work um, to infect the larvae is 15 to 30 degrees C, but the spores will remain viable even below freezing um, for up to a year. So just going over the application rates, um, 
you know this this table is is probably a bit too uh, overkill for for what we're saying uh, the rate we recommend is 500 grams per cubic meter um and that is that rate has been trialed and tested um and it is is a really good rate to help get those spores in the growing media nice and evenly um and gives you really good levels of control as well against black vine weevil in terms of compatibility, there are some products which um, are incompatible and need further testing. Um, but this is like fungicide compatibility here um, because this, this, is a, this is a fungus that's growing. Um, so if you're using fungicides alongside this product, it's worth noting these. If you have any products that aren't listed here, please let us, let us know and we can, we can do compatibility tests to double check that as well. Um, but it is quite it is quite compatible with a lot of products, which you'll be pleased to see. And in terms of beneficials as well, there are some incompatible beneficials um, and some which need further testing. Um, but you'll see here there's a wide variety of beneficials there which are compatible um, and nematodes as well, which I don't think are listed on there from what I can see, but they are compatible with this product. So that works really well when you're building an IPM program. Uh, and also honeybees and, and bumblebees and earthworms, um, they're compatible with this. You know, they're very, um, you know, they're looked at very closely when you're looking at any product now because of, of the environmental consequences and, and the effect that some of these products have on them. But the good thing is there's zero effect. So, so it ticks those, those boxes quite nicely. So what I want to do is just go over a little bit about black vine weevil. I'm sure it needs no introduction as a pest. I'm sure most of you in the room are aware of it, how um, devastating this pest can be. Um, it's it's a coleoptron, so it's a beetle-based pest, and it's the larval stage which causes the damage. Um, the adults do cause uh, you know unsightly damage on the leaves, but it's the larval stage which we're really focusing on as the main problem of this pest. Um, one of the issues, it's got such a wide host range in ornamental production. It's not really um, specific to one particular plant, which makes it very difficult to control. Uh, as you'll see on the on the last uh, point there, it causes losses of up to 40 million to the UK horticulture industry and 4 billion um, worldwide. And it should be noted that this were, these figures are before the loss of Exemptor, which was one of the only growing media incorporated uh, insecticide products to help control fine weevil too. So that figure is, is likely uh, increased since then. So just going over the adult stage. So the adults, um, they chew irregular notches along leaf margins. So if you're growing things like Portuguese laurels, you might see this kind of characteristic damage. Um, it can sometimes be confused with a disease or chemical industry, but it's it's quite characteristic. But one thing to note is that they cut notches on the margins only. They'll never make holes in the centre of the leaf. So if you're seeing holes on the centre of your leaf, it's very unlikely to be vine weevil. It could be something else. Um, it's hard to monitor because vine weevil, the adults are largely nocturnal. Feeding occurs mostly at night, but if you think you have an outbreak, you can go at uh, you know dawn or dusk is is a good time to go see them. Like in the evening, go with a headlamp on or a torch, and you should see them if the infestation is really bad. Feeding on on the leaves, and um, what they do during the day is they will hide in sort of nooks and crannies. It could be out in you know debris on the part on the leaf surfaces, um, and then you know that that's why they're quite hard to monitor. Now, after emergence, uh, which does vary year to year, but it's typically springtime in outdoor production, um, they emerge, they feed, and after about one to two weeks, uh, they start to lay eggs. Um, most adult populations die in the autumn. So um, a single adult, so another thing to note is that adults are parthenogenic, so they lay their own eggs, they don't need to re reproduce. Um, they can lay up to 830 eggs per year. So you can see if you have multiple vine weevil adults emerging and laying eggs that soon becomes a real big problem on the nursery. Um, so once the eggs uh, hatch, they hatch into really immature instar larval stages they're called, um, and this is really the stage which uh, which is causing the issues. So the larval stage feeds on the roots of the plant, um, the plants essentially, you know, they will turn brown and die if you're growing susceptible plants. So if anyone in the room is growing crops like heucras, you can almost walk around and if you think you've got a problem, you can pick up and all you pick up is the crown of the plant. The roots are completely, completely d destroyed. Um, 
because they're hidden in the soil, it's sometimes um, difficult to spot an infestation until it's too late. So that's really part of your cultural control is, is building in a real good monitoring approach to, to helping keep this uh, pest under control. Um, so the larvae, that generally, you know, if the adults are laying their eggs throughout summer, the, the, they will start feeding throughout the summer, but then um, during the winter, they do begin to feed on the roots. It's a little bit slower, um, but they then pupate. So the pupate pupal stage is, is when they turn from a larval uh, just before they turn into an adult. Um, so after pupation, that's when the adults begin to emerge again, and then they crawl out of the host plants um, uh, to feed. And there's only one generation a year, but in indoor heated production, generally over above 12 degrees C, uh, there can be multiple generations and overlapping generations um, in the year. So you can see all stages throughout the year in a heated scenario. Uh, here's a graph which shows the susceptibility of ornamental plant species to vine weevil larvae. You'll see here there's quite a, a large amount of plants which are attacked, and even on the on the rarely attacked column, some of those plants can be attacked if if their favourable host plants aren't um, available on the nursery. So you can see why this is such a problem. It has such a wide host range, um, and this this is just trees and shrubs. And then if we go forward now to herbaceous perennials again. There's some real classics on here, you know, primulas, heucras, begonias, all very susceptible. And even some of the rarely attacked uh, plants there are susceptible, again, in the absence of, of their favoured host range. Um, so really wide host range. You can see why this is such a problematic pest. In terms of control methods, um, there's been very few control measures existing for the control of black vine weevil. As I mentioned, uh, we used to have Exemptor, which was a uh, fire cloprid. It was a neonicotinoid pesticide, which has now been withdrawn from use. Um, so that is no longer available. And that, that was Growing Media Incorporated. So it was a really good product. It lasted for 38 weeks. But um, because it's been withdrawn for use, that, that left a bit of a gap in the market to how to control this pest. And this is where ICL bought in the Seeker nematode range to help growers fill that void. Um, but one thing we always you know, approach with growers is, is going through those cultural control options. You know, if you're buying stock from a nursery uh, that might uh, have an infestation or, you know, you're, grow you're buying a susceptible plant species from that nursery, it's things like quarantining that until you can be assured that there's no pest present. Because the last thing you want to be doing is introducing this pest into your kind of general population on the nursery. Um, but yeah, the, the nematode range really uh, is something that we've worked quite hard um, to, to get to grips with in the industry. Um, there's been a lot of people who were very dependent on the products such as Exemptor and never really um, used nematodes. So we've worked quite hard developing um, a lot of programs like IPM plans for nematodes. One, one of the drawbacks for nematodes is it's the timing of application. Um, you know, they're very dependent on temperature. They will, the, the, the Seeker CT, which is the cold tolerance, only works down to five degrees C in the growing media. Um, so you are limited in that extent. Um, we do have another product, Pitcher GR, which controls the egg stages um, of vine weevil. So you have a dual approach there, um, but it does kill nematodes. So you have to plan those applications quite, quite quite well, which is what we work with um, growers very closely on. Uh, and this is where Laugard uh, really fits into that whole IPM plan. It's a growing media incorporated product. You can combine that with your nematode um, applications. So you get this real like threefold method of control. And there are other products out there which you may or may not have heard of, but they are subject to you know country regulations on their use. Um, so this is where Laugard really gives growers another option um, for control to be built into this IPM program. So as I mentioned, you know, for Laugard and, and vine weevil, um, we're envisioning a lot of people will have Laugard incorporated into their mixes. And it can be used throughout the production cycle from propagation to final potting. Um, and it is effective against all larval stages um, when applied before vine weevil egg laying occurs. So it's a really strong product in that regard. Um, it can persist, as I mentioned, in treated growing media or soil for a year. So you can buy this 
um, in your mixes in a colder part of the year. But like the, the other thing that we mentioned is that it won't start to affect the insect until those conditions are favorable. But you can have it there preventatively um, when those temperatures do increase and that pest pressure increases too. So, you know, when we apply it in the growing media, those fungal spores break off the rice carrier. Um, the vine will come into contact with the spores and, and then they go through their life cycle, as I mentioned. You'll, you'll see on the picture here, the kind of stage. Um, it's the second kind of stage along where that, that larval, larval stage is already dead. And then what you're seeing next is the, the spores, the, the fungus growing inside the body, consuming the insect cadaver and then redistributing out into the growing media as well. Uh, and like I said, the younger larvae are less likely, you're less likely to see any like really immature larvae like, affected like this because they they're decay so quickly after death. Um, but it's this, these older larvae, which can be, a, you know, a good monitoring tool as well. If you flag up a, a few plants that you know have uh, vine weevil or plants that you, you're growing with vine weevil issues, you can flag a few pots uh, and just see the effects of this as well. In terms of the life cycle susceptibility to laugard, um, all stages are susceptible, but what we're really focusing here is, is the larval stage. Um, but there is some susceptibility to the egg, the pupil stage and, and the adult stage. But uh, the, the larval stage is the real focus here. That's where a lot of the research and data comes from. Um, so that's where we build this into the IPM program. One thing we've also developed to help growers build IPM plans on the nursery is, is our plant health planner. So it's a digital web based tool, um, helps simplify and optimize plant health programs on UK nurseries. So it's, it's mobile and tablet friendly. So if you're working on the nursery, walking around, looking and thinking, oh, I've seen, spotted some vine weevil, you can look, it'll give you the week number and we build an IPM plan based on, on what the nursery requirements are. Um, we build an IPM plan tailored to that. Uh, and then you'll see, oh, week 10, this is when I need to do an amatode application or, you know, and we can build all sorts of programs into this. It's not just limited to, you know, a viable plan. We can do disease plans. We can do feeding plans. Um, and what we're working with, we're working with nurseries really closely now to, to get this all in an online format. Uh, we're ticking that sustainable box because a lot of it's all in paper format as well. Um, so it's really helping growers build like robust IPM strategies against vine weevil. And, you know, just finishing up, Laugard will be available for the 2023 season. Uh, we're expected to have stock towards the end of this year and early into next year. So please speak to your local ASM for more information. If you'd like to incorporate this into the mix or you'd like to buy some, um, I'm happy to come visit nurseries as well. Uh, we can use the plant health planner to look at what you're doing and build robust IPM programs uh, to help you get the most out of these products. So thank you very much for listening. Again, I'm, I apologize, I can't be there in person today. If you, if you have any questions, please ask uh, your, your guide who's, who's looking after you today. Um, my email's on the screen there, so feel free to ask me any questions as well. Send me a message. Um, there's a panel at the end of the talk today as well, so any questions you can ask there. Uh, but thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.